games here with stuff we play. Uh, this is a series that I want to do mainly on stuff that well, I have memories with, or cool stuff that I collect, or if I have friends over, you know, talk about games and stuff with them. So I figured why not start off with something I have a lot of memories with, and that is the Game Boy line of consoles. I have all the ones that were released in North America here. I stress North America. There is one that was only released in Japan that I will mention. What is the Game Boy? Well, it's best known for this version, which is the Grey Brick DMG, released by Nintendo in 1989, and it, was, it wasn't the first portable game system. That is a big misconception. I don't actually know what the first one was. What I do know is it was the first one to really become a massive hit. Like, this thing sold something like 130 million units total. Total. Granted, how many of those units were because of Tetris and Pokemon? Can't say. But this thing sold a shit ton of units. In fact, this one right here is my sister's very own Game Boy that she's had since 1995. It's the cool gray version. But, you know, before I get ahead of myself too much, I'm going to go start from the beginning and go over... Uh, all of these, plus some cool little accessories, you know, along the way. Don't worry, for those of you who have seen other similar videos, I'm not going to go over every chord and warm line and stuff. I'm just going to go over what I think is cool in all the models, and then at the end, I'm going to uh, say what I think is the best Game Boy for you, assuming that you don't have a Game Boy to go and start with. So, as I said, this is the Grey Brick. This is the DMG Game Boy. It came out in 1989, not 1999. This particular one was given to me by my friend Colin, and when he gave it to me, my god, it was a grody, grody looking Game Boy. Like, this thing had like dirt and shit in it. I cleaned it up. So, what is there to say about the original Game Boy? It was a huge hit, especially because they had the brilliant idea to pack in Tetris with it. And Tetris was massively popular. I know people who played nothing but Tetris. In fact, when we get to this one right here, um, that came with Tetris, and that and I think Super Mario Land are the only games my sister ever played, and in fact, they're the only games she still ever plays in it all these years later. So yes, this gray brick. Massive battery life. It runs on four AA batteries and gets something like 20 hours or something. I should really have looked this up beforehand, but hey. It's wonderful as a collector's piece. I would not recommend this to you if you just want something to play Game Boy games on. And the reason is, first off, it only plays the original black and white Game Boy games. However, on top of that, when I say black and white, I mean puke green and white. Or puke green and black, I should say. Uh, it's not appealing. However, as I said, as a collector's piece, particularly if you can find this in the box, I'd recommend it. I have a bit of a funny story about the original Game Boy. So, uh, I went to Retropalooza Houston a few weeks ago, the, the first one, if you're watching this years from now. And uh, there's this booth there, and this guy was selling a, a Game Boy Camille box, granted it wasn't a very good box, but hey, it was near the end of the convention, I was like, hey, let's even get it for cheap. So the guy's like, alright, I'll do 40 bucks on it. Alpha Omega Sin walks into the shop, and the guy whips out his camera and starts recording it, like, He's recording Alpha, but he's also recording the sale that's going on. I'm like, alright, now is my chance to try to really get a deal on this. So, I turn to Alpha. Keep in mind, I've, I've never met the guy before until this moment. I just, you know, really know him because I watch his YouTube videos and I saw his panel earlier that day. I'm like, Alpha, what would you pay for this Game Boy? And his words exactly were, well, that is one grody, pussy-ass looking box. I wouldn't pay more than ten bucks for the entire thing. So I turned to the shopkeep and I'm like, all right, 10 bucks. And he did it. Only downside? Guess who stupidly left his boxed Game Boy at the shop? <laughs> Granted, I paid 10 bucks and I picked up a bunch of other games from there for a pretty cheap as well, but still. So a couple years after the original Game Boy was released, Nintendo came out with the Play It Loud series, and what the Play It Loud series was, uh, was exactly like the original DMG Game Boy. Same shape, size, still took four AA batteries and got the same awesome battery life. The only difference is that these came in a variety of colors. Uh, there was a blue, green, 
red. I know there was a white one in Japan. Or the one my sister got, which is a cool gray one. No, not gray. This cool clear one, I should say. The Play It Loud series isn't really that special. I would recommend it as a collector's piece over the original just because of how cool it is. Like, look at this. This is so 90s. You can see all the innards of the Game Boy, and that sounds awfully grotesque, but yeah. So, a few years later, I want to say about 1996-1997, Nintendo decided to release a smaller, more compact Game Boy. That was this, the Game Boy Pocket. Like the Play It Loud, it came in a variety of colors, except... Allow me to open the box here. Yes, this is complete, though. I'm not going to do a close-up on the box because... I mean, don't go for box unless you're a crazy collector like me. The Pocket is a lot smaller than the original Game Boy. In fact, here it is for comparison. It's quite a bit smaller. However, the screen is actually larger. And not only is it larger, but instead of being black and pew green, it's actually black and white now. The battery life, if I remember correctly, is about the same, which is impressive seeing that instead of four AA batteries, this takes two AAA batteries. Would I recommend the Pocket? That's the question. And the answer is, unless you're a collector, once again, not really. Uh, like the original model, you can't really play this anywhere that's not like right near a lamp or something. It still only plays the regular black and white Game Boy games, so that's what you'd expect from any Game Boy made before the color. So if you do want to collect them, the original Game Boys can play it loud, they're cheap. These, even cheaper from my experiences. I mean granted, as I said, my DMG Game Boy was given to me, but going to like conventions and swap meets and stuff, I tend to find Game Boy Pockets for like seven, eight bucks. So there is one Game Boy I don't have, and it's uh, the one I was talking about earlier that was only released in Japan. And that would be the Game Boy Light. Uh, and what the Game Boy Light was, was essentially a Game Boy Pocket, but with a backlight. Why every Game Boy between that and the Game Boy Advance SP did not have a backlight or front light of some sort is beyond me. But yeah, it happened, and it was only released in Japan, and why was it only released in Japan? because it came out the same year as this. This is the Game Boy Color. It's about the same size as the Game Boy Pocket. And I shouldn't have put that back in the box. Same size, however, this takes two double A's instead of two triple A's. And the screen's actually a little smaller, which is really kind of weird, along with your standard link cable port, like on most Game Boys, because I forgot to mention, but for any of you who played Pokemon, you probably know this. You could link up Game Boys and play games cooperatively. So you can grab a link cable and a friend with a Game Boy, and with both packs, you can catch them all. The Game Boy Color also had an infrared port. Why you would ever use that, because infrared is a crappy, crappy way to communicate, like, between devices, particularly if you're using Game Boys, but... Hey, the option's there if you wanted it. So before we go on to the advanced line of Game Boys, I want to talk a little bit about some, like some Game Boy related accessories that came out for the original and the color. First off, right here, I'm going to try to pull it out without knocking that over. Here's a Super Game Boy for the Super Nintendo, and what this was was a cartridge for your SNES, and you could plug it in and then take an original Game Boy game, uh, not a color, but just original, and plop it in. And that's really cool. And what was cool about the Super Game Boy, and this was years before the color, was that uh, it would actually colorize your original Game Boy games to an extent. But not only that, but some games had Super Game Boy exclusive, say, palettes or uh, borders or stuff, like uh, Mega Man 5 here, and it played them no problem. Also for the Game Boy was the Game Boy Camera. I actually have two of them, a red and a green. Uh, until the iPhone came out, this was actually the world's smallest portable camera. You can, you know, twist it around so you can take a selfie. These are easy to find, they're cheap. I got both of these from Half Price Books for, uh, I think it was something like four bucks each. The, the, the one weird thing, and this is another weird story, uh, this yellow one, someone took dick pics with it. Why would you take dick pics with a Game Boy camera? Like, you have no life if you do that. What I'm saying is to have whoever uh, owned the Game Boy camera down in Bel Air or whatever. Why? But anyways, so you take these cool pictures with your Game Boy camera, but then what? Well, that's
that's why you have your Game Boy printer. Yes, and this thing is a beast. It takes a whopping, I hope I can get it open on camera, a whopping six AA batteries. And that's on top of the potentially four double A's you'd be using if uh, you're using an original DMG or Play It Loud Game Boy. But what's cool about the Game Boy printer is that you'd connect it via link cable, and it was a split link cable, so you could use it on either uh, a color or a pocket or an original DMG or Play It Loud. You could print out your Game Boy and camera pictures. But not only that, but some games had special functionality with it, like I know in Pokemon Red and Blue you could uh, print out a picture of your team, and that was cool. And uh, it prints out in thermal paper, which is really cool. And unfortunately, it uses a specific size. If you get one nowadays and want to actually print stuff, I'd recommend you buy just a regular roll of thermal paper and cut it down. With any console, uh, you're going to have your cheaters. And to help out with the cheaters, there is the Game Genie. And what does the Game Genie do? Well, if you've ever used a NES, SNES, or Genesis Game Genie, it lets you use cheat codes to make your games, well, easier, or weirder, or glitchier, or whatever you want to do. And what's really cool is it comes with this little tiny code book. Just, just look at this. And it has something like a few hundred pages worth of codes. Yeah, 170 pages worth of codes. Just that little tiny book for your Game Genie. And let me tell you, this thing is massive. Like, look at that. Just look at the size of that thing. That's cool and all that you can, you know, use codes to make your game easier and stuff, but what if you want to actually see the screen on your Game Boy? Because, you know, God, you paid like a hundred bucks for all this crap. You might as well see it. This is a magnifying glass slash light. And what you do is you slide it on like so. You can just fold it out and it makes your screen bigger, actually a bit more seeable. Another thing to keep out for are the different types of cartridges. So th this is your basic Game Boy cartridge, particularly this is an import cartridge for Mega Man 5 on the Game Boy. Why is, did I import this specific game? Because American copies are freaking expensive, and it's a shame, because it's a great game. But that's besides the point. The Game Boy is region free, so all cartridges should work on any Game Boy. This is your basic gray Game Boy cartridge, and I'm just going to slide this into the Game Genie just to show... Oh. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it. This is your typical Game Boy Color cartridge. Uh, it's clear, which is really cool, but also really 90s, and you can just see in there all the innards and stuff. Also, more importantly, your typical Game Boy cartridge has this little notch right here. Color cartridges don't, so you can't put them in an original Game Boy or whatnot, and that's fine because even if you took the board out and you know just tried to put it in, it'd still give you like an error message. What's interesting is, you see this yellow cartridge right here? These specific games with the color cartridges, uh, they were Game Boy Color games, and they'd have all the benefits of Game Boy Color game, but they had a black and white mode, so you could actually play them on your original Game Boy. I could imagine that got a bit confusing, but you could do it. And that's cool. So moving on, we get to the Game Boy I first got, and that was this, the Game Boy Advance. This came out in 2001, and it, it was really cool. You could play games like Gunstar Superheroes here. Fantastic game, by the way. Check it out. It's dirt cheap. And it was wonderful, really wonderful. It's extremely comfortable. It came in this cool, clear, 90-ish type thing. Or you could get just a, a solid purple one. The only problem with it, you know how I mentioned that the original models had terrible screens? This one makes those look godly. This literally has the worst screen I've ever seen on any portable gaming console. And it's also why I wouldn't recommend this one. I would recommend is one of these. Now why do I have two GBA SPs? Well, this one right here is my actual original uh, GBA SP that I got in 2004 for Christmas. Uh, which is also why it's so scratched in the top because hey, what are you going to do? I was like eight. What it has that makes it so much better than that one is its front lid. Like you see that, can toggle it off, on. So that's cool, that's really cool. A few years later, they came out with one that's even better. This is the Game Boy Advance SP model AGS 101. And what makes this better is instead of being backlit like the 001, the original one, it's backlit. And it not only is it backlit, but it's very well backlit. Honestly, if you just want 
a portable Game Boy to play around, I would recommend this one if you can find it. If not, because these I you know sell for like 40, 50 bucks nowadays. The 001 is just fine. You can see it just fine. But this is the absolute best one. Game Boy Advance SP, the pinnacle of portable Game Boys. However, we aren't done. No, there were there was one more model of the Game Boy, and that was the Game Boy Micro. Now the Micro has the distinction of being incredibly tiny. If you take an SP here, you notice it's only slightly wider than the top screen and about twice as thick. Compare it to the original, it's so much tinier. Compare it to the original DMG Game Boy, or I guess in this case the plate lap. Look at that, just look at how tiny this thing is. And it's even better backlit than the AGS-101, and it's really tiny, and I absolutely love it. There's only one problem with it, besides the fact that uh, it also had removable faceplates and good, you know, luck finding those nowadays. It only plays Game Boy Advance games. Which, granted, hey, maybe that's all you want to do, and if that's all you want to do, this is a wonderful choice. It's a fantastic travel console. However, if you want the full range of the Game Boy line, I'd still stick with the AGS models. Besides, if you want something that can just play Game Boy Advance games, I'd recommend one of these. these are, this is the original DS Fat and DS Lite. Not the DS Fat so much because, uh, honestly, the light's a lot sleeker. It has a better build quality and, well, the screen's better too. Either way, both of these are dirt cheap nowadays. I, I picked both of these up for seven bucks each. This, I said, was the best for portable Game Boy games. The best thing for playing Game Boy games in general is this. This is a Nintendo GameCube. Attached to the bottom of it is the Game Boy Player. The Super Game Boy could only play original Game Boy games. This thing can play original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. Granted, it's harder to find. In fact, the one I have here, uh, I imported from Japan for like 20 bucks. American ones are ridiculously expensive and I don't know why you'd want to pay 70 bucks for that. Uh, the reason why is the unit itself's not rare, it's just that you need a startup disc for it, and good luck finding those. There is another option, if you're fine with not playing Game Boy Color games. For your SNES, you could get the Super Game Boy, and then you could get this. This is the Super Retro Advance Adapter, and this allows you to play GBA games on your SNES. Now, what merits you after that? Well, put frankly, uh, the SNES controller is just better suited for Game Boy games than the GameCube controller. Actually, honestly, that's the only reason I could imagine why. The, the big problem with that is it requires its own AV output, and I'm not even going to pick that up this time. I'm sick of fixing that. That's all of the consoles and whatnot, but there is one last accessory I do want to cover. This is the e-reader for uh, the Game Boy Advance. What you do is you plug this into your GBA, and what this thing allows you to do is to play games that come on cards, like you swipe them like a credit card. Just play the games, and they poured out a bunch of NES games, I know there was some Game & Watch stuff. The only thing is this didn't really take off in the states, and the reason why is, the reason I can imagine is, you'd have to swipe like some cards six, seven times just to get the entire game on there. It's ridiculous, but it's a cool novelty nonetheless. So there you go, I've told you what I think are the best things for playing Game Boy games. Uh, the Game Boy Advance AGS 101 and the Game Boy Player for the GameCube respectively. But those are just my opinions. What are your favorite Game Boy models? And not only that, but seeing as I've gone over the entire history of the console, I mean not the entire entire history, but the entire lineage of the Game Boy. What is your most nostalgic Game Boy memory, if you have one? And if you don't, well, you probably had a Game Gear or Lynx or something, or just young, and that's fine. So anyways, until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw. Also, check out my series, Let's Talk About Games. It's my friends and I getting together, getting tacos, usually actually going out to places and talking about subjects ranging from our uh, game hunting trips to even doing retrospectives on the series heap, just taking tacos home and uh, playing through random game series. Also, uh, check out my commentary channel, Team Nameless, which is run by my good friend Alex and I.
And speaking of Alex, he is responsible for this awesome pixel art you see here. So anyways, until next time, everyone. What type of taco? Pussy. <laughs>